Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Beauty Died Laughing and I'm here with my weekly wrap up which is taking place in a different location and um, because I'm up in Donegal so I am not in front of my normal bookshelves which is why the background is a little bit different this week. So I have five books I want to talk about this week, four of which I've read, one I have half read so I'm going to talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. Um, but the first book I completed this week was Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Backman which I uh, briefly mentioned last week. So Brit Marie is a character that first appeared in Frederick Backman's book um, My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You She's Sorry um, and she was kind of like a side character in that book and she wasn't a particularly like likeable character um, but gradually in that book um, the more you kind of got to know her a little bit through the main character the more you kind of warmed up to her and um, where this book it takes place kind of after some events that happened and my grandmother asked uh, me to tell you she's sorry um, and we're kind of seeing Brit Marie as she goes out on her own and kind of starts this new this new journey in her own life um, and she starts kind of becoming independent for the first time in her life and she is has to go and like get a job. She moves to a new place called Borg and she ends up kind of accidentally becoming a coach to this uh, juvenile football team. Um, and Borg is kind of one of these places that's like, there's no really jobs, there's not that many people living there. Everyone that lives there seems to be a little bit miserable. No one really wants to stay there. Um, and Bert Marie kind of comes in and starts making herself at home and kind of by just being herself, she's always kind of found that by being herself, she tends to like, repulse people or people don't really want to be around her but these people really really like her and end up kind of becoming her friends and, and she kind of starts having these realizations about herself that the, all these things that she thought were bad um, and things that she wasn't good at she actually realizes she was good at and it's this really just beautiful story about this kind of woman in her like in her later life she is in her 60s and she is suddenly given this whole new lease of life because she's suddenly becoming independent she's realizing kind of dreams that she thought that she'd forgotten about that she's realizing again um, and the way Brit Marie is written um, I it's not like stated anywhere but I think that she definitely seems to be a little bit on the spectrum and um, the way she kind of communicates with people and the way she kind of finds it hard to communicate and understand humor and sarc sarcasm and stuff like that and she's very truthful she will tell people the truth without realizing that she's hurting people she will end of saying things that might actually hurt their feelings and um, but this was just such a really heartwarming lovely book um, and it, it's a particularly good book for people who might like soccer and um, because there's lots of nice little kind of um things about soccer and what soccer clubs how the soccer club that you um root for can say a lot about your personality which I found really really funny so I absolutely love this book and I gave it a four out of five stars the next book I finished was an audiobook and was the care and feeding of Ravis ravenously hungry girls by Anissa Gray um, and it was uh read it was narrated by a different kind of a group of narrators so it was kind of like a um whole like a full class recording um, and this is kind of the story of this um family and the mother and the father are, have gone to jail over some sort of kind of fraud sort of case it, it's kind of explained throughout the book but it's kind of some sort of fraud case and we're seeing how this has affected the entire family um particularly the woman's sisters who now have to take care of her teenage daughters um and we're seeing how this kind of thing this woman like this sister was kind of like the matriarch of the family she was the mother she looked after the sisters when they were growing up and she was almost more like a mother figure to them than a sister figure and we're seeing how her being to j in going to jail now and um obviously committing this crime um does really affect every single member of her family and we're learning things about their past and how the, how the past affected them and affected who they are today and how some of their actions today are is directly related to things that have happened in their past with their father and with their mother's early death and then their sister kind of looking after them uh, when she was younger. Not much I can say about this book. This is one of those books that I don't have a whole lot of thought of I, like I, I the only thing I can really say about it is I liked it I didn't love it and um, I did pretty much enjoyed an audiobook it was a good audiobook read it wasn't my favorite audiobook read I wouldn't say it would be on my favorite lists of 2019 um, but I did enjoy it and um, it just wasn't a book that really left a lasting impression on me or would make me really recommend it to other people and um, it was just it was a good book but it wasn't a standout book so I gave it a three out of five stars. I read a book that has been on my neck alley list for quite a while as everyone knows everyone who kind of does neck alley has that kind of backlist of books and um, that they're always meaning to get to so I decided to try and tackle one of those uh, this week and that was Race Girl by Lee Hutton. This is kind of a YA horsey novel and anyone who watches this channel knows that I love my horsey novels and um, so I decided I would go and read this a uh, YA kind of contemporary novel set in kind of a horse world and in this we're following a girl called uh, Tully and um, Tully wants to be a jockey and 
and it's her kind of big dream that she wants to be a jockey someday and she wants to be an award-winning jockey and win all these big races and um, but her mother has actually died six months earlier from a horse racing accident so now Tully is scared she's dealing with a lot of anxiety and she's really scared to get up on horse again because obviously of what happened to her mother and then her father is going through kind of a deep depression because of her mother's death and um, their farm is in financial trouble and he also doesn't want Tully to go anywhere near horses um, apart from the horses that they work with on the farm but he doesn't want her to be racing horses basically or riding horses and um, so Tully has to kind of deal with this and she eventually ends up rescuing this horse called Dahlia that she calls Dahlia after her mother which is a bit, bit weird um, and she decides that she, was, she wants to race again and then there's this boy and things kind of go from there Um this book had like I feel like it had a lot of potential um, and the first 40% of it was so boring it was really really boring because we kind of we learned really really quickly about Tully and her, her family and her dreams about racing and then it kind of really quickly became just this romance and how she was just obsessed with this boy even though she'd only like seen him for like five seconds and then she was like in love with him and then they had like one kiss and then she was heartbroken when he didn't text her back and like literally she was like heartbroken for like a year and a half in the book um, and the first 40% kind of seemed to span only like a few months and then the last 60% of the book spanned like two years like the two, two years went really quickly and it started going really quickly when like things I, that I liked happened like things like when she suddenly so like started really becoming a jockey and she's like you know she started training to be a jockey and that was really interesting to me but that went like that went really really quickly and then I feel like there were just so many things that happened in this that were just so unbelievable and so cliche like there was just so many horsey cliches if anyone reads books about horses and particularly like YA books about horses there's a lot of cliches a lot of tropes and this book basically has like almost every single one of those tropes um and then there was stuff that happened at the very very end a lot of like really dramatic stuff that happened in the last 20 percent that were just so dramatic it was so laughable like I literally laughed out loud at one point because I just thought it was so so crazy that so many different things happened and um, when at least only like one of these things could have happened and it could have given the book a nice little twist of drama um in the last like run up to the end but all these things happened like literally one after another and I was like okay that's like way way too much like come on and um, I'm pretty sure this book is self-published which is why I think it needs so much kind of tightening and I feel like it needs a lot of stuff scrapped and thing and like just things done to it to really tighten it up and make it like a proper flowing storyline and plot line because I feel like a lot of stuff that we were told in the blurb like the whole like her having anxiety about the racing and stuff like that was glossed over really really quickly um, and then it became kind of just a whole other thing and the romance and it was just so annoying and stupid and way too time consuming I think for the fact that it wasn't really a YA romance it was a YA horse novel and it was just it just kind of irritated me but I think the writing itself was was, was generally good and um, there was no like spelling or grammar errors that I saw that you sometimes see in self-published novels it's just one of those things that it just really needs kind of a fine tooth comb to go through it and just scrap like all these bits that don't need to be in there and just tighten it all up a little bit for it to be a better flowing story and um, so I gave it a two out of five stars just because I didn't really enjoy it that much and um, and yeah unfortunately just wasn't wasn't one for me last book I fully finished this week was The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker this is a book that was a uh, shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and this is the Iliad retold in the woman's point of view so this is retold through the point of view of Briseis who was Achilles slave um, and she was a queen um, in a town um, or a city called Lernessus I think um, and when that was sacked by the Greeks um, Achilles took Briseis as his prize um, and basically she was a slave and obviously uh, he raped her and um, she had to serve him and there was this whole thing that um, she kind of is in the, the, the Iliad as why there was a rift between Agamemnon and Achilles because Agamemnon tried to steal Perseus from Achilles um, but this is told through the eyes of Perseus um, and it's just basically telling the story of the women um, because in the Iliad um, and in a lot of stories where we hear about Troy um, and like a lot of like this got these kind of like era of stories and you know these big feats that men took part in and um were celebrated and stuff you don't really think about the women who were left behind and the women who were left behind when all their men were killed and what happened to them and um how they had to live their lives after that when they they'd seen their men being killed their children their boy children being killed in front of them you know stabbed to death thrown from from walls things like that like really really tragic stuff and then they had to go and uh 
be, like they had to go and like end up being like slaves sex slaves all the sorts to these men and some of them lived really terrible lives and so i think this told this was just a really really good way of um telling this story and i just found there were so many parts of it that were really 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 powerful um and I loved it. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I love the Iliad. I love this time era um, and like the whole myth of Troy. Um, and I love, you know, I love the Greek gods and I love Achilles and Hector and Priam and Paris and Helen. I love that whole storytelling. Um, so I loved this. I love being able to see that story again but through the eyes of Briseis um, and through the eyes of someone who has respect for some men but still has a high contempt for them as well and you know that any chance she'd get she would want to live a different life um, and I just loved that kind of weird kind of hate love thing going on um, and it was very hard to kind of figure out exactly how she felt sometimes but she's, she was a character, Briseis was a character that you could really respect um, and yeah I really really liked her and I really liked her voice and there were just as I said there were just some really really powerful moments in this book um, and that I loved and I will probably remember for a very long time and um, I think I might have to get a copy of this for myself because this is a library copy but I think this is one I might have to get a copy of for myself because I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four and a half out of five stars and then the last book I have been reading this week and um, I am just over halfway through is Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan which is the third and last book in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy and um, so this one as I said I'm just over halfway through now I might try and finish this tonight and um, I am enjoying it and um, I'm not enjoying it as much as um, the second book which was China Rich Girlfriend um so this probably might be my least favorite out of all of them so far I think but that depends on how the last um third goes for me I think um but we will see um I'm not really like enjoying all the name dropping in this one as much um I feel like it's happening more in this book like they have things like you know like Carl Lagerfeld and um Nigel Barker and Michael Kors and all these people are being name dropped and like have conversations and like for some like scenes in this book um, and I don't really like that and I actually find it a bit uncomfortable seeing as that like they're real people and I just I don't know it's like I don't know it's just, there's just something weird about it that I don't really like um, and I don't feel like that happened as much in the other two books and um, as far as I can remember um but whatever it is I don't really like it in this book but um I am kind of enjoying the drama as always um because they're just so crazy and you just have to like take it with a grain of salt um, but um I am enjoying it um, I'm just not loving it as much as I did the second book which was trying to trying to rich girlfriend and um, so I think this might be a three and a half four stars but um it remains to be seen as of yet so that is everything i have read this week please let me know what you guys think as always and i'll see you guys again next time